President Trump, you didn't build that. President Trump is holed up in his New Jersey golf course this weekend, winding down after his big 4th of July politico-military extravaganza. And I think now that we're two days removed from it, we can all breathe a sigh of relief. There were no tanks rolling down the street. It didn't look like something out of North Korea. Trump also delivered a fairly straightforward speech about American exceptionalism on a day in which that's totally appropriate, with only one minor historical revision. Just to set the record straight, no, there were no airports in the time of the American Revolution. Trump also refrained from using the majestic Washington Mall backdrop and patriotic occasion to lob insults at his political opponents, real or imagined. All in all, it was a pretty traditional affair. I'm not really mad at any of it. The F-22 and stealth bomber flyovers, the Bradleys on display. I think we can celebrate our ideals and values while also celebrating our military, the men and women who defend them. I don't even mind that he's already turned the whole thing into B-roll and tweeted out a snazzy video of the event, you know, for his scrapbook. But here's what made me sad this 4th of July. I'm usually one of those gals who likes to gear up for Independence Day. I love this country and I want to show it. I like to put on my America tank top, throw a patriotic koozie on an adult beverage and post funny memes to social media like Ronald Reagan riding a velociraptor or a Blinken on a grizzly bear. But this year, for some reason, I didn't feel right doing any of that. That's because more than ever, patriotism feels synonymous with Trump. Here's the deal. Trump has hijacked patriotism, and I'm not here for it. When the president of the United States turns our democratic ideals on their head, ideals like a free press and free and fair elections, undermining them just to make himself look better, making us doubt our very best assets, he doesn't want you to love America. He wants you to love him. When the president of the United States demands abject, unwavering loyalty of members of Congress, people who pledged an oath to uphold the Constitution, not whatever he says, people who were elected to represent us, not him, when he weaponizes that loyalty, he's saying above all else, even above America herself, you have to love me. When the president of the United States protects and puffs up enemies of ours, people who hate us and everything we stand for with every fiber of their totalitarian beings. When he puts his faith, faith in their word against ours, it's because he's decided they don't have to love America. It's more important that they love him. In Trump's mind, he is America. Patriotism means celebrating him. Now, even if you're a Trump supporter, that should be deeply disturbing. History has shown us a couple of guys like that. They don't usually end up doing great things. So look, he can boast about crowd size all he wants. He can pretend he's what we're all celebrating this weekend. He can imagine he's somehow responsible for our greatness. I'm celebrating America, but my celebration has nothing to do with Trump. He has nothing to do with making America great. And he's got nothing to do with why we're the best damn country on the planet. I've always loved this quote by Barbary War Naval Commander Stephen Decatur, one of my favorite historical figures. He says, our country, in her intercourse with foreign nations, may she always be in the right, but our country, right or wrong. Well, that's what I posted this year. All right, I want to hear what other folks think of all of this. Joining me now to discuss our CNN political commentator, Matt Lewis. CNN political analyst Kirsten Powers and former State Department spokesman under Obama, Admiral John Kirby. Admiral Kirby, let me start with you. I know you were a little uncomfortable with Trump's focus on the military, but it wasn't the military parade we all had feared, right? That's right, and I was glad to see that uh, his grand ambitions after watching the Bastille Day celebrations two years ago in Paris sort of were trimmed down here, uh, and, and it wasn't quite as extravagant as it was. But S.E., it still bothered me uh, that he tried to shoehorn onto the 4th of July what he really wanted to do on Veterans Day. Even though it was trimmed mm. down, it was still a little more ostentatious than I'm comfortable mm. with. And, and frankly, that's not who the military is as an institution. We're not into ostentation, uh, and we don't want to appropriate a, a national holiday like, uh, like the 4th of July for ourselves. Now, yeah. again, it wasn't, it wasn't as bad as it could have been, but it still made me very uncomfortable. 
I understand that. Um, Kirsten, Trump really seems to equate patriotism with supporting him, and not just this weekend. He's asked American farmers to make, quote, patriotic sacrifices to support his trade war. He's called the media unpatriotic for doing our job. Uh, U.S. women soccer stars unpatriotic for not wanting to visit him in the White House. I mean, for conservatives, um, patriotism has been typically reserved for a celebration of ideals, not demagogues, right? Yeah, I, I don't think that he can separate uh, the two things. I, it, he really is somebody who expects everybody to sort of revere him, be loyal to him, uh, and and that to him is the same thing as being an American. And like yeah. you said, we've seen it over and over again, um, where he he talks, frankly, like some sort of tyrant, not like a you know democratically mm -hmm. elected president of the United States who has the capacity to understand the difference between occupying the Oval Office as as a person versus sort of talking about himself almost in, like he's a king. Yeah, Matt, um, according to a new Gallup poll, 70% of adults say they're extremely or very proud to be Americans, and that's the lowest figure in the poll's 18-year history. Only 45% are extremely proud. The second year in a row that that measure is below a majority. Do you think, is that about Trump, or is it that his opponents have been hammering America's awfulness for the past two plus years? I think all of it. I think that if you're a if you're a progressive, uh, and Donald Trump is president, that might impact the way you answer that question, uh, at least for now. Um, and I think that yes, you do have people on the left who actually are not terribly proud of this country. And I think yeah. that the one thing that made Donald Trump, uh, you know, that that helped Donald Trump, if he wants patriotism to be synonymous with supporting Trump. I think that the controversy with Colin Kaepernick and uh, Ka Colin Kaepernick and Nike and the Betsy Ross flag certainly helped him right. uh, kind of create that contrast. Admiral Kirby, the divide was really in stark relief on Thursday. On the one side of the National Mall, concert goers and protesters, there, there were protests continuing today, and on the other side, you know, MAGA hats, military personnel. I mean, two ways of expressing patriotism, but it just feels like there are two Americas right now. Yeah, and I think that you're, you're right. You sort of look at what happened there on the mall. You, you can see that. But in a way, SE, and despite those poll numbers, that kind of gives me hope, right? That hmm. we can all still be Americans and disagree about what it means to be an American and sort of where the country's going. And if there was one glaring omission from the president's speech, and I admit that my criticism in the moment was too harsh than it probably should have been. You're right, it wasn't political, but he didn't take an opportunity to talk about where America's going in the future and how we can get there together. And, and the mall demonstrations kind of de de you know, develop or sort of demonstrate how divided we are. Um, again, there's not, that's not all bad. It's good to have a, a, you know, a diversion of opinions here, uh, but I would like to see him try to use the 4th of July, which should be a unifying holiday, to sort of move us all together in some one sort of direction. Well, Matt and Kirsten, I want to get your take uh, on this. Matt, Matt, I'll start with you. Justin Amash announced he's quitting the Republican Party. This was after taking on Trump on the Mueller report. Trump has since called him disloyal. No surprise there. Um, we've seen these short bursts of right flight. Steve Schmidt, George Will, Joe Scarborough. They really only result in like a one day headline. Not much happens after these people announce they're quitting the party. I want to know your thoughts on leaving the party versus maybe staying in it to fix it. Well, I, I think this was a, the right move for, for Justin Amash to do. And some people say you should have stayed stay in it to fix it. Uh, that ship has sailed at this point. I hope he does run for president. I think hmm. that, you know, Bill Clinton used to say it's better to be wrong and strong than right and weak. And I think one difference between Justin Amash and some of the others, not everyone you mentioned, but people say like like Jeff Flake, for example, yeah. uh, who stood up to Trump, but I think did so in a way uh, that was not very strong. I think Amash is tough. And look, is he going to beat Donald Trump? No. Uh, can he create a beacon of hope for young conservatives and libertarians and maybe a pathway forward after Donald Trump? I think he can. Hmm. Kirsten, your thoughts on, on Amash quitting? Uh, well, I think 
First of all, I think he's an extremely principled person. He, I, I disagree with him on a lot of things, but I've, but I've always had a lot of respect for him, and he's somebody who does really stand by his principles. And so if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be Justin Amash, right? I, I, I would expect, you know, I'm not surprised that he's the person who's sort of stood up against, you know, particularly in the Mueller report when most Republicans were going along with it. Yeah. Um, I think it's always a very personal thing, right, whether you're going to stay or leave, and people have to sort of decide, uh, they have to look at where they are and decide whether or not they think they're actually able yeah. to make a change. It seems like right now it's not really making that much of a difference for people who stay.